It's October, Matt. You know what that means. It's business planning month. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 137. As always, you can find our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Joe Brian, what's the plan? Well, you know how much I love talking about business planning and goal setting, and, and that's what we're going to do. It's October, and we are going to take this month and on our Friday podcast for you, we're going to break it down into little steps to help you really dive in and how about having a year that you really do run it like a business? How about that? That's what I'm going to challenge everybody. That's unique, I think, for most people. So I think that they should listen and watch. And right. learn. Today, I want to talk about activating your fourth quarter power and doing the first step in the business plan, which is to review where you are so far this year. That's what I like that activating your power. That's an awesome. Yeah, you know what? So, Matt, I was thinking about Wonder Twin Powers when I wrote that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So a little inside joke, uh, Matt and I have, if, you, if you're if you old as we are, you may know who the Wonder Twins are. And we're just going to leave it at that. And if you don't know, then you need to Google it. Um, but I love the fourth quarter for the sake of, and why, why I never have believed in all these years of doing business planning in January is because of the way real estate works, we've got to use fourth quarter to really ramp things up to uh, be able to start a great next year. And so that's what we're gonna focus on this month. We're gonna walk you through and we're gonna, each of the steps, and we're gonna keep reminding you that if you don't have business planning documents and you don't know you need more help on this, we have a completely free course on this, including all the downloads I'll be talking about over the next uh, three, five five weeks actually. Right, Matt? Right, that's right. Right over at wbnlcoaching.com. So um, wanna just dive in and we'll talk about it. Let's do it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. And here we go. So it is episode 137. Let's talk about what I mean by activating your fourth quarter power. I just love that, and I'm going to really use this with my clients and with our team because I'm not saying that you don't take some time off in the fourth quarter because let's face it, we do have holidays coming up. And you should do that. That's the best part of re, you know, revitalizing and and getting balance, right? But that's something coming up later where we'll sort of talk about that whole, we'll we'll do that close to the end of the year where you do this whole reset and revitalize yourself and walk through some more of that mindset stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about mindset along the way. But this activating your fourth quarter power, it's just awesome because there's a lot of folks that sort of wind down in this business and skate through the fourth quarter, and that's a huge mistake. So you have to balance it out with taking some time off. And let's face it, 2020 is a a year for the record books for all of us. There has been mostly negative stuff for everyone. However, I'm going to really help everyone listening focus on finding the positives and celebrating the wins, and that's something we'll have for you. Uh, coming up between now and the end of the year, we're really going to get you super focused and ready for the new year, right? That's right. We have lots of stuff that we can share with you and talk to you about. But I have to say, Matt, you know, he, with all the changes that we've personally gone through, that the country's going through, that we're still dealing with, and with the pandemic, coronavirus, all of this, and with no hope in sight, frankly, from my point of view, that it's going to linger on. Now we've got the flu season coming back in. I was just talking to folks about hey, you might want to go out and stock up on all those supplies again because if, if in fact we get spikes because of now the flu on top of everything else, I think we just don't know, right? So I'm not trying to create a panic. I'm just saying I need to keep being smart and doing what you're doing. But now's the time to focus on a couple things. So here's what I mean by activate your fourth quarter power. I'm going to talk today about conducting a business review your year to date. We'll get to that in a second. 
But I also want to mention there's two more things I think you can do to activate this fourth quarter power. And that's to right now identifying three things for your business and for personal development that uh, for your personal life and your business life. And, and I like this, what we call stop, stop, continue. And all I mean by this is you, you keep things simple, right? We've been talking at WBNL Coaching about less is more, keeping things simple, right. making sure everything you're doing has a flavor of value to your clients and making a connection. So when I'm talking about identifying three things, I'm talking about in the next couple months, really get clear about this because this is about habits. So what is something start? Is there something in your business, in your life that you said you were going to do this year and you haven't? that you might need to start doing. I don't know. It could be things like committing to making phone calls, maybe taking that walk or, you know, doing whatever you, you're going to drink enough water, whatever those things are. Is there something that you just need to recommit to? This is all we're talking about. And it's just maybe one thing personal, one thing in your business. Is there anything that's distracting you or is negative or is something that you're wasting time on? That's the stop part. So is there something you can commit to stopping and, and freeing up some time so that you can either start something that you haven't been doing or three, continue something that you are doing that's positive and making a difference in your life and your business, right? So that's a really cool, high level, simple way to approach what's working, what's not working. We'll be talking more through the month about other ways to look at that. And the third thing that we're going to do to refocus and activate that fourth quarter power is to refocus your intention for the rest of the year. You know, I always say this, it's so powerful. I love October because I really do like talking. I like the fall. I like I like October as a month. I know you do, right? Yep, absolutely. But it's also the time to really start digging into all this business planning and goal setting because by the time you get through it and get done with it, what you do right now, the beginning of October through the end of the year with taking some balanced time off so that you can rejuvenate and refresh is going to set you up for success in 2021. If you if you skate through the next quarter and wait till January, you're going to be three months behind. That's the whole deal. It takes you know 60 to 90 days for a deal to close for you to get paid. So refocus your intention. And here's five things for you to think about, or just four things. I'm just going to give you four things. Yeah. How many listings do you want to take between now and the end of the year? How many buyers would you like to get in escrow? Okay, let's or in, and have your listings sold. So how many escrows? How many new listings? How many appointments are you committed to setting between now and the end of the year so you can hit those goals? And to be able to make appointments, you have to commit to how many connections, which is calls, texts, Zoom meetings, are you going to commit to on a weekly basis? And what are you going to do to hold yourself accountable to that? Um, all right. So that's I want to start with that. And I'm going to circle back at the end on something that I want to share. I think I might have talked about it that, that I think is really working on our team about accountability to help you stay focused and stay accountable for the last quarter. But let's jump into the the thing we were really going to talk about today and it's uh, conducting. So those things I just talked about is the theme of what I want to keep carrying through. How are you activating your fourth quarter power? Are you refocusing your energy? Then we're going to take you through step by step. And today's step is to conduct a business review. So over in our show notes, uh, there's two things that you can get. You can download this one document that we have for you today that's just called review of your business. It's integrated into our business plan. It's actually the very first page right. of our eight or nine tab. I think it's nine tabs with this. Or maybe it's eight tabs with the review. Uh, Excel spreadsheet that is our auto-calculating, absolutely free business plan for you. We'll have links in the show notes. You can go directly over to the store at WBNL Coaching and just go get our free course. Yep. Um, I'm going to be walking you through in a 10 or 15-minute segment here in our podcast but if you really want the, the tutorials where we're, Matt and I are walking you through everything we're going to cover in the next month, just go get the, go get the um, free plan now and you can follow along with us. So this document I have for you today is going to walk you through step one, which is reviewing your business. You can also just go download it and get, get it all with all our other documents in our free course. So once you get this document, this, is what it, this document mainly is going to have you look at your numbers. So let me take you through what it's going to do for you. You're going to find out everything from how many listings you've taken, listings sold and what you've closed, how many buyer represented sales you've done. It's going to help you calculate your sales volume. Most people don't know their numbers. Okay. So this document is meant to help you look at that. Take some time, go into your paperless transaction system. If you haven't been tracking your numbers already and just go do the research. It's so amazing to me, Matt, over the years, I'll talk to someone and I'll start coaching someone. I'm like, okay, how many closings have you had so far this year? And it'll be like, 
Uh, uh, I gotta think about that. I mean, I will tell you that the majority of people I talk to don't know their numbers. Um, and, and it's it's one of those things where it's like, well, I, I really been meaning to do it and I just never get around to it. Uh, but you know, if you're gonna run your business as a business, you have to know your numbers. And we're gonna, oh, sure. I was gonna say that, that's funny. You don't have to create anything, just go get our stuff. So you're gonna get your sales volume, what kind of transactions are you working with and days on the market, all right? And then the, the document, it really helps you. And when you pull this all, when you put it all in there, it'll help calculate some numbers. The next thing that you do, so you fill the top part out with all that information, how many listing sales, all that, your volume, how much commission you earn. Then I think one of the most next important pieces, you're gonna identify where did the business come from? So there's a spot on this sheet for you to be able to go, was that a referral? Was that uh, an advertisement? Where's your business coming from? You know, everyone always says, oh, I'll get 80% of people say 80% of my business comes from, 80 to 90% of my business comes from my sphere of influence, my database. Okay, that's great to know, but maybe not 100% is. Where's the other 10 or 20 or 25? Maybe you'll find out actually it's not as much as you think. You know, is it a referral? Is it, a, is it from another agent? You know, where'd you get your business? Then the next thing it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you look at is um, taking a look at those target markets, okay? And this is going to tie into that start, stop, continue I was just talking about. Is there some things that you could be doing right now in those little niches that you're working? Is, are, are you, you're going to ultimately realize when you really dive into the numbers, did you spend a lot of money on a certain type of marketing that absolutely didn't work for you? So that would be an example of maybe you don't want to continue that, or maybe you need to tweak it in some way, or maybe you weren't doing some things like following up with your leads or whatever it is that didn't work out for you. So this is what I love about this assessment is that it's time to be a little analytical and make some business decisions about your business, because the worst thing you could do is move into 2021 and keep on doing things the same way, which means you'll get the same results, right? So this is just creating some awareness around that. The other thing we'll talk about a little bit later as well uh, in the coming weeks is to really jump into your budgets. Um, I think another thing you could be doing right now for a lot of reasons, not only for tax reasons for the year, but for you to get a sense of what is working and what's your return on investment. And we have that in our downloads of the business plan, the free course. It's a simple P&L income statement. We have budgets for you too that would let you track your revenue and break down all the expenses that you have, which your accountant will love. But you can also just use a real simple, how much money did I bring in and how much money went out? And the, and the, result, and the result of that is not necessarily profit because you still have to pay your taxes and, unless you calculate that in. But that's going to give you an idea of all that. You know, we talked about that a little bit last week because there's no there is no doubt that you picked up expenses across the board uh, throughout the year on little little new programs or systems or tools or whatever along the way that you need to regroup on over the next, you know, uh, you know month or so while you're building your plan to know what you need to give the boot and what you need to keep, because that's crucial because your budget is so, so important. If you're not paying attention to the money you're spending on things like that, you are throwing money away and your work is so hard to make your money. So you know, make sure you have it all, you know, firmed up. Matt, I am 100% doing that right now in two areas for our coaching company. That's right. We started to work on that and sorry, Matt and I are starting to put the budget in the the thing together and do our business planning for the for the rest of this quarter because we want a powerful activated activate the power of our fourth quarter for coaching and doing it for our real estate team too. Mm -hmm. So we're taking our team through all of this as well, uh, and starting with getting everybody to review what worked and put what systems that we need to do. So this is such a powerful. Don't miss this step about reviewing your business, no. and crunching the numbers, and it's not just gathering the data. It's super important to dive into seriously looking at if you spent five grand, 10 grand on advertisements on some place or whatever lead generation, and you didn't really get any results. Okay. So here's the deal. It may not be that the results are, you got, you need to understand why did you not get any results? Is it because it's something that you didn't, it's not the best place to put your money or is it because you really didn't have a follow-up plan in place? Right. You know, did you have a proper follow-up plan or can you be honest with yourself and say, Hey, I really need to, you know, focus on one or two areas. This is why when in our coaching, we always talk about don't try to be all things to all people and don't try to do every niche. I always say three is the magic number. Your database plus two more areas that you're going to focus your energy. And those areas can be a demographic. You could say like 
I can say, I'm just going to focus on the military group, or it could be 55 plus. These are areas I could be get into, right? Because I am 55 plus. Sure. I am a veteran, but it's something that you're passionate about and it's a niche. So that's what I mean by demographics, first time home buyers. It could be an area of town. It could be a price point. You could be into, if you're listening around the country, you could be doing beachfront properties or luxury properties or high rises. You get the idea. What are you passionate about? And then your tactics and activities and everything you do around that niche, that becomes the, what I call the success action plan. What do you need to do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually to be able to um, stay you know, connected and uh, show value to those niches so it generates business for you. You know, really and truly, if you're looking back on your you know, reviewing your business and all the different things that you're doing, you know, in your business to create, uh, you know, uh, uh, business, um, you can almost use that stop, start, continue uh, idea on each one of those, right? Because you, there are things within each process that you're going to want to refine and you're going to want to improve. So I think stop, start, continue is a, a it can be the overarching thing throughout all of your business planning, really, because it kind of help you think about what you need to do. You know, and honestly, I'll give you an example of something for our team and for me. And, and, and it's what has been so awesome for transitioning from broker owner kind of positions to back to team and focusing on coaching and focusing on our team is holding myself accountable to putting walking my talk and putting the systems in place that I'm, I have been coaching and teaching for years. And Matt, it has been so fulfilling to, to see and to actually continue to tweak those systems and put it into all of our training courses and things that we, we, we have done. We're redoing some content. We have data Squire helping us add additional content. That's it's more relevant and all that stuff that we're doing here at WBNL coaching. But I have to say, I, I keep coming back to it, but if I was going to share one example of start, stop, continue for our team. Okay. So one of the things that we, did start and we will continue in this year is zoom, using zoom for accountability sessions so uh, cosmo and i he's uh, my co-leader you know we're, we're probably going to go to three we're doing it for five and it's 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 hard for everybody to find the time but we were at first we started with two sessions and just said hey everybody come in and at least do one a week, you, you find the time to make your calls because the bottom line is in this business, you have got to be lead generating a certain amount of hours a week, or you're not going to get the results that you need. It's just the bottom line. And that's why most people kind of go through kind of bumping into business and, you know, they've done a good job and somebody will think of them, even though they haven't done a really poor job of staying in touch with them. So one of the things we're going to continue is doing that um, is holding maybe three a week. And what I find for me is jumping into those sessions as well as a team leader. I always have phone calls to make and it, it makes me stay committed to it. It is a difficult transition for someone like me. And I find for the uh, agents that have been around for a while that never really did it. People don't like the whole I got to be held accountable, even though they say I want it. Excuses pop up and all that. But what we're finding is when people are when our team is jumping into this, they're making they're t here's what they're doing. They're taking action. They've set an intention about connecting with whatever their database, their leads, and good thing is happening to it. Now, something that we're going to start, that we started this year, and again, we'll continue, is the newsletter, okay? So how many years have I been talking about the local business newsletter? And I can't tell you that if I was going to say one thing that helped shift uh, connection with the seasoned agents on our team, and even for me, as I made connections with just a handful of people because most of the people in my database are agents after 28 years of doing real estate in Nevada. But I think I put 15 to 20 people in my database, in my CRM, and I connected with them. I made phone calls. I sent an introduction, everything I coach, and I've sent the newsletter. And I have people having conversations with me and sending and saying, I've got business that's probably coming up that I'll refer to. Because all I had to do was let them know. And I know we have had success on our team with our agents who are the newsletter has started the conversation with, Oh, Hey, so-and-so uh, I got your newsletter. I got your information. Great stuff. Hey, by the way, I have somebody to refer to, or we're thinking about selling our house. So that is something we will can, we will continue doing into the new year. As far as stopping for me right now, I would share that I have to stop the whole um, talking about, you know, 
it's not like it's a, I have to be more cognizant of putting energy into the right activities. So right. I have a tendency to always wanting to be planning. And before you know, the days got away and all I've been doing is rearranging and getting a few tasks and stuff done. So I have to stop that behavior and stick to my priority list and choose. And this is one thing I started doing a little bit already, but I, I have to stop being obsessed with all the list of things I need to get accomplished and just know that there's a finite number of hours in the day that are available and what are the priorities. And so even though I might have three lists going, what I, what I am going to continue doing and that I, that I, um, I continue to not stay with. So this is why I have to stop this, letting it be the interruption is to pull off three things I know I can accomplish today. Yeah. You know, and then as the fires come up and a phone call happens or a deal starts unraveling and that's, that's our business. You can't control it. You can't control all of that, but what you can control is how you decide to react to it, go handle it. But then if I just go, don't get overwhelmed with, this is for me with everything I need to do and just say, these three things need to be my focus. And what I have to stop doing is getting pulled away. And I, I even this week, uh, here I am, you know, still out in Georgia, and, which is awesome. And, um, you know, <laughs> just yesterday, Jim, we actually added about a hundred things to our, 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 well, you know, it's good, but at the same time, I, I still have the tendency and I must stop doing this and yeah. I'm committed to stopping doing this is allowing something else that's on that list that might be a little bit more interesting for me to do. And because sometimes the things on your list are, you don't want to do them. And you so then find all these reasons to do it. So I've got to stop doing that. So that's yeah, what I'm talking about by way of example of exactly what are what are some simple things that you can do? Because if you, if you can get overwhelmed with okay, I have, to, I have too much to do, or I'm disappointed that I didn't hit my goals. For God's sakes, we had a worldwide pandemic in right. this year. You had whatever else went on for you. You had to figure out how to adjust your business to that. And for those of you that did it, and we've been broadcasting. Since it all, we did a 30 day, uh, you know, work from home challenge, which is still relevant. We just figured out how to keep moving on. And I think those of us that did that are going to are 100 percent fine. And now you even can take it to a new level, right? Yeah, absolutely. At WBNL Coaching, we really, you know, over the last few months, Jan and I have sat down and really looked at our whole marketing uh, and delivery systems uh, within the within our company and, and made some major changes. I mean, you know, as far as stop starting and continuing things, we really went in and said, you know, we we had six websites starting in 2020, right? That is an extremely inefficient way of uh, connecting people to your product and to your your uh, your deliverables. Uh, not and expensive because you're hosting all those things. So we have now gotten our business down to two websites: a travel wandering but not lost down our WBNL coaching sites. And I'm telling you, and in and in the process of doing that cleanup, and I'm sure that you might not have six websites, but you probably have some marketing things. That you should go back and look at whether it be your websites, your uh, social media platforms, whatever you're doing. There's probably a way you could be much more efficient, not only with time, with your deliverables, your communication, and your financial end of it. If you go in and really look at that stuff, and then kind of start to fine tune it. In the process, the greatest byproduct of doing that kind of uh, go back, uh, you know, back through and review is that you can improve your products tenfold, and you can make them more organized. You could update things that you didn't really realize wasn't up to date. I mean, you know, we are content, uh, content creators and we've been pr very proud of that for the last five years. Uh, well, but however, when you've been creating five years of content, you know, sometimes there are some things that maybe need a little updating. So, you know, that mm -hmm. constant review that you need to do um, needs to be done at the very least once a year. And this is the perfect time to do it. Uh, but you obviously should be kind of keeping track of that throughout the throughout the year. Well. There's just so much you can stop, start and continue. And I just love that uh, that exercise. We certainly uh, consolidated and I think in the long run got rid of some expenses. You know, when, going oh. to the platform we went to was a higher expense, but I think in the long run we are saving. Oh, we're 100% oh. saving because there's so many related additional things. And that's what happens in our real estate business. You end up buying this product and that thing. And, right. and you talk about it all the time when you start doing your personal budget and I'm in the middle of doing that too. How many subscriptions do you have that you don't even need anymore that you weren't even aware? When was the last time you really looked at your either credit well, card? Well, you know what it is also? It's that hook where, you know, get a 30-day free trial. Well, you know, how many times do you do that? 
And right. Forget. And then you never cancel. Right. Yeah. So and even and um, this is what oh, I love to look at this kind of stuff, because there are so many fourteen ninety nine, nine ninety nine, six, you know, things that seem so trivial when you're signing up for it. But when you go back and you really start cutting these things and realize you're cutting h- hundreds of dollars out of your budget a month or whatever the number is, it yeah. can be pretty substantial as the year, you know, uh, tallies up. So and it really means you have to go look at your credit card statements and yeah. Your- in your bank statements, which I think so many people, unless they're really, really good at staying on top of that, have just allowed to kind of go by the wayside. The days of balancing the checkbook, I don't know. I don't even know anybody who does that anymore. But well, probably you're, you guys are listening like, what? You don't do that? If you do it, well done. <laughs> you're not on this. But I bet a bunch of people are in, in, the bo- in the boat where Matt and I are like, you don't know that you had that. I signed up for something that was $4.99 a month and I, and I forgot to cancel it, right? It's easy to do it because there's so many streaming services and gaming platforms exactly. and even with your kid that you're not even aware of, That's right. uh, you know, that you've done and so on. All right. So let's conclude with just talking a little bit about what it, over, what are you going to get in this course, this absolutely free course? You're, it, it actually is the very first module of, our, of one of our paid courses, which again is only $197 for our 10 systems. Which would be a good thing to budget, by the way. Yeah, definitely. You definitely could take a look at the the connecting your real estate business. But what we give you for free is the entire first module, which is business planning and goal setting. And it has got a series of videos, trainings that Matt and I did, where we take and do in detail what we're going to cover, what I covered today, what we're going to cover for the next three weeks beyond this or four weeks. We do it in detail. And so you can go and start uh, going along with us as we go through this or just go get it. And in the time that you have to start doing your business planning, you'll get all the video training. But here's the documents that you get you, that come with it. We have a goal setting workbook. It's a writable PDF that you're going to be able to download. And when I get into uh, goal setting, which is next week, actually, you'll be able to use this guidebook to sit and go through everything and do um, serious goal setting in all areas of your life. We have some additional worksheets to help you with a big goal and breaking it down into the tasks and the next action steps. You know, the big piece you're going to get is our business plan document, which again has eight tabs in it. I think it has nine tabs because we have an overview in it, but eight tabs in the spreadsheet that don't let Excel scare you. It does all the heavy lifting. It does the calculations, but all together, it is a true real estate business plan. Um, We have an income and expense statement. We have a business budget that is auto calculating. We have a personal home budget. And then we have a template for what we call the success action plan that lets you pull your goals out, put the things you're committed to doing on a daily, weekly basis, those activities, those four or five things you should be doing every day to drive business to you and a way for you to track that. So that's what we're going to give you 100% free. And uh, just go over to the WBNL coaching store. You'll see it. Uh, you'll also see one other free course if you're thinking about building a team. Uh, we we have a free team building course, which we'll actually be updating in the coming weeks. If you get that, you feel free to get it. We're going to be replacing the videos and update, updating that slightly as well. Again, 100% free mini course for you. And that's what I wanted to cover today. Activate your fourth quarter power. Conduct a year in review business. And we have some tools today in the show notes. And obviously this course for you over at WBNLCoaching.com to help you on your journey to starting uh, 2021. Let's, let's, let's get 2020 behind us. Let's do it. We're all looking forward to 2021, even though I think we're still going to be dealing with this, this coronavirus. We don't know how to deal with it at this point. We know how to act, I guess, but we know we should know. That's the best way to make it through and, and uh, make the best of it, right? That's right. Good stuff. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for episode 137 of the Wandering Without Lost podcast. You can get all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. And don't forget to go over to Wandering But... Oh, no. (laughs) Don't forget to go over to WBNLcoaching.com and go to the store. So it's WB wbnl coaching forward slash store and download that free business plan jenna brian if you do not review your current year you really truly cannot plan for the next year there's no way to do it otherwise it's just ridiculous stuff you're just throwing things out there yeah 
And that's that's what we don't want anymore. We don't want to just throw things at We want to have a plan. We want to have, look, I, I'm all for keeping it simple. And when we get into the, the stage where we talk, we're going to talk goals next week, and then we're going to get into the business plan. If you don't like, uh, I have clients who love the eight-page thing. We have a simple three-page version that we're going to share with you too sure. that you'll be able to download if you just want to not get into tracking your marketing dollars and marketing calendar. You know, it's a comprehensive business plan, but we have a simple version too. So uh, stay tuned, right? Stay That's tuned. Right. Come on back in. Go get our training stuff and make 2021 yours. That's what we're going to tell you now. And you got to start today. You got to start today. You can't wait till the end of the year. That's right. Or remember, everyone, uh, you know, get up, get out, mask up, and be forever wandering, but not lost. See you next week.